Hello everyone. Good morning. Dzień dobry. I'm Hubert Pajączkowski. Uh, and I'm Aneta Zimińska. And we are from School with Class Foundation, which is based in Warsaw, in Poland. And uh, in our foundation we work with teachers and educators and for teachers and educators. And I would like to ask you, uh, are there some teachers on the board here? No. There are no teachers, okay. But maybe educators. Uh, and some people are watching us online, so we are saying hello also to them. Uh, our organization focuses mostly on supporting teachers with trainings, materials, tools to help them teach in friendly, open, practical way. And we are trying to give them meaningful experience, uh, educational experience. Um, and today we are going to talk about one of our projects, which is called Fake No More. It's international one. And I have another question. Are there some people from Poland here? Okay. And from Romania? From Czechia? Okay. And from Spain? No one. Okay. We have some international partners in our project. Uh, these from Poland, probably you recognize Demagog, which is association well known for fact checking. My Mundo is a Spanish organization and it's focused mostly on creating materials for uh, social awareness. Factscape, Fakescape uh, is a Czechia organization and it's, it's teaching about uh, media literacy through play and games. And at least uh, we have also at Faber which is Romanian organization, and at Faber is uh, working with kids uh, at risk of exclusion and giving them meaningful educational experience. And we also have our European Media and Information and Fund. And today we are going to talk about connection between emotions and disinformation. But before that, we are going to show you the short animation in Polish, but it's with English subtitles, and probably you will see some tips to answer these questions. Tak, to właśnie dzisiaj jest ten dzień, kiedy dowiadujesz się, że twoja ulubiona gwiazda przyjeżdża na wyczekiwany koncert. Uczucie euforii jest nie do opisania, więc szybko udostępniasz informacje o koncercie. Teraz okazuje się, że to była fałszywa informacja, która poleciała dalej w świat. Zdarza się też, że cała radość znika, a ty czujesz smutek. Na przykład wtedy, kiedy ktoś wyklucza cię z grupy. Zamiast porozmawiać o tym z zaufaną osobą, sięgasz po telefon i zaczynasz scrollować. Natrafiasz na coś, co wywołuje w tobie lęk i wzmacnia to twoje przygnębienie. Uwaga, twój telefon zaraz się rozładuje. Czujesz, jak rośnie twój niepokój. Zaczynasz desperacko wysyłać wiadomości do znajomych, nawet nie zastanawiając się, co piszesz. To chyba typowe, kiedy czujesz się spięty, co nie? To częste i zupełnie normalne, że emocje wpływają na nasze reakcje. Jak sobie z tym radzić? Przede wszystkim zatrzymaj się. Zauważ i nazwij to, co czujesz. Weź głęboki oddech i zastanów się, czy na pewno chcesz kliknąć. Okay, so as you saw in our animation, uh, in the Fake No More program, we are focusing on developing young people's self-awareness as a basis for building resilience to disinformation. So we are showing young people how our emotion, how our personal experiences uh, affect uh, our reaction on the internet. Uh, but also outside of the uh, outside of it, um, we wanted to change uh, teaching uh, the way of teaching about disinformation. Uh, we wanted uh, not to show another tools for fact checking or how to 
uh, recognize this information. We wanted to start from our <laughs> self-awareness and uh, show young people how to uh, how to how we are exposed to this information through our emotions. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, we uh, developed a structure that is um, uh, that has five uh, thematic areas. Uh, so the way I feel, the way I think, the way I see the world, the way I react, and the way I act. And now we will go through uh, all five thematic areas, so you will see how we are approaching uh, this uh, subject of emotions and disinformation uh, in our project. So the way I feel, and let me start from the basis, because we are going to talk about emotions. And usually when we grow up, we don't talk much about emotions. Uh, we don't name them, sometimes we even ashamed of them, sometimes we want to hide them or pretend that they don't exist. But in our program we want to map them, we want to recognize them, we want to name them and we want to truly feel them. Uh, and for instance we use uh, some tools to help mapping our emotions and this is a plutchik wheel of emotions and it's showing the wide range of emotion. Uh, these obvious ones, but also this one, who are maybe not that obvious. This is one of the tool. And actually, this is a good question, is how emotions are really related with this information. Because usually when we feel strong emotions, not really not only the difficult ones, but as you saw in the animation, also these positive ones, like joy, like happiness, we can feel and make actions without hesitation, without reflection, sometimes even against our own interests. So it's very important for us to map these emotions and to understand them. Yeah. And in the way I think, Aria, we are focusing on fast uh, and slow thinking. So this is uh, the concept that are based on um, Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman researches. Uh, so uh, what is fast and slow thinking, for example, when we are approaching um, traffic lights uh, and we see that it's a red light, we instantly know that we need to stop. And when we see the green light, we know that we can go. And this is fast uh, thinking, uh, also called intuitive thinking. So we are doing things without o overthinking <laughs> uh, and we do it intuitively. But when we have to do something more complex, like for example, preparing for this speech, or for a workshop, we need to analyze a bit, we need to uh, consider what we want to do, what we want to say, and this is slow thinking, this is uh, also another uh, way, uh, it's called another way analytical thinking. And the fake news and courage, uh, the intuitive thinking. So uh, we uh, we are trying to tell young people how to stop, how to not do, uh, not to think fast. Uh, we want them to think slow. Uh, and then we have another thematic area. It's the way I see the world. And here we are talking about cognitive biases. So it's. It sounds complex, but we are trying to do it in a simple and attractive, attractive for young people way. Uh, so evolutionary, the cognitive bias should help us, but unfortunately our brain uh, didn't uh, uh, change that much since many thousand years. So uh, they are now not working so much well. Uh, and for example, we have here uh, the halo effect, uh, which is uh, effect when we when we meet something, someone new, uh, 
uh, and that person makes on us a good impression, uh, then uh, it positively influences on our uh, opinion about that person and the golem effect is the opposite <laughs> of the halo effect so when someone will uh, make a bad impression on us then we will think about uh, that person more negatively uh, so uh, we are showing this and other uh, cognitive biases and uh, we are telling young people how to be aware of them and uh, we are uh, learning, uh, teaching them how to recognize this situation when the cognitive biases uh, are beginning to rule of our thinking. And then we have the way I react. Can keep the <laughs> yeah, okay. So in this chapter we focus mostly on digital well-being and we talking with kids and youth about the challenges that they face in their daily life. Uh, they face um, overwhelming of information, they face uh, stress, they face uh, like many, many challenges that uh, they are related with online world. And we are talking with them not only about the quantity of time that they spend online, but also about the quality, which is crucial here. And in this part, we are trying to map not the only the way that we face the information that reach us and what we want to read or we what we don't to really read, but also the, about the circumstances around, so how we really feel and in this in this moment that we have some emotions, how we react on this uh, information. Yeah, uh, and the last, the last thematic area uh, is the way I act. So we are approaching our actions in the social media and, and on the internet. And here we have a chance to talk about social media algorithms, so more technical things uh, than in other um, uh, than in other areas. Um, so, for example, here we can talk about the filter bubble. So, uh, is a consequence of the working of social media algorithms. So, uh, this means that only some pieces of information are displayed to us. Uh, and we don't see everything that it's uh, in the internet. We are, uh, we have only the small part of uh, of the internet that is shown to us. We can also talk with young people about uh, the echo chamber, uh, which is uh, the effect when we are going inside of closed, for example, for cl for example, closed groups on Facebook that have the thesis that is already. Um, very strong in this group and then we are uh, more convincing ourselves that everyone around us thinks the same uh, because on this group we have the persons that are uh, that uh, that think the same way <laughs> and have the same um, thesis in their mind uh, so uh, this is uh, this is how we structured our Mm, our program and based on that we we designed uh, and created uh, the curriculum in the form of publication uh, so it is uh, it has uh, the title understand emotion become resilient to this information uh, so and it consists uh, with the theoretical introductions for educators so that uh, educators can read something about uh, about what what I already and Hubert we already said to you because it sounds maybe complex for the teachers but also for the students so uh, so we want to provide them some knowledge so that they can feel more confident uh, about what we uh, what we prepared. And uh, so we have 
For each area, we have theoretical introduction, and for each area, we have several activity scenarios, and uh, they are designed for people aged uh, 10 to 12 and 13 to 15, but we know that uh, educators are working with these materials with also younger <laughs> and older uh, students. They just adapt them to, to their needs. Uh, we also design them that way so that they can be uh, uh, used in the smaller and bigger groups uh, in sometimes even in the more individual work. Uh, we also prepared the multimedia presentation and printable worksheets, so it's easy to just take it and go to the, uh, to the students and prepare uh, the, the, the lesson or the activity with them. Uh, and of course, <laughs> we were trying and hope we we, we did good. Uh, we prepared also in these activities, we prepared examples that are close to young people so that they can uh, relate to what, <laughs> what we are talking about. So we were trying to, to, to adapt our materials to, to their needs. Uh, and also we have uh, another thing. Uh, Hubert, please. Yes, last but not least, it's Octogram. It's a card game and it shows the mechanism of locking us, trap us in the bubbles, in the filter bubbles. Um, actually, we brought some materials for you. Um, so I really encourage Polish people because this version is in Polish, but of course we have also a uh, version in English and in Romanian, right? Yeah, we, we, I will tell you in okay. a moment about it. Okay, uh, so we have also materials to print it out on our website. Uh, you, will, you will see the QR code in a minute, but you can also use these ones in, for, for these who are Polish. And this is um, the game that we create with our partner from Czech Republic. Uh, yeah, and for the uh, for the game, we also have the video instructions, some kind of tutorial, so it is easier to uh, see the tutorial and to uh, know the rules of the game. You can see it with your students, uh, or uh, yeah. We have one of the material here, so I will show you. So it is very, very nice to, to play it. It's, uh, as we saw, it's also very nice to play it uh, for adults, not only for children. Uh, so it, it has also um, some kind of storytelling part, uh, building stories, etc. So um, this is a nice, really nice game uh, that is also educational game. So we can talk about what we are, uh, about our presence in social media playing in that game. Uh, yeah, and as you said, you are not teachers or educators, but you can use this game in any other context, talking about disinformation and mechanisms that they are behind this. Yeah. And uh, all of these materials are uh, available on our website, so School with Class Foundation website. They are free, they are available in English, Polish, Spanish, Czech and Romanian. Uh, they are also on Creative Commons license, so they can be adapted to your needs. You can use them uh, as you need to want. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we encourage you to, uh, to, even if you don't work with young people, just to, to see what's in these materials because maybe some theoretical parts will be interesting for you. Um, and I think that, uh, that it's really nice approach that gives us um, um, opportunity to to talk about this information in uh, in more unique way than it's uh, common, <laughs> uh, and I think that it's more uh, 
our materials are for that more timeless because we are not basing on, on the tools that can be uh, that can be not working in the moment because the disinformation change the disinformation materials are still in the change and uh, so this is more the approach we are starting from ourselves from our awareness what we are feeling and how does it affect uh, affects uh, what we are doing so it's a very human <laughs> approach um, and this is it we have four minutes still but maybe you have some questions uh, for us we can answer i don't know if any questions also uh, has appeared online, but if someone has a question, we can answer it. If not, we can <laughs> just uh, finish a bit earlier, but we have also here our... Uh, I, I have a question. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> have you reflected in the relationship between uh, Wikipedia and the use of Wikipedia with uh, information, not disinformation, but information. Because, uh, for example, <clears throat> during uh, COVID-19, Wikipedia was one of the most reliable sources to com uh, <clears throat> fight against disinformation. So I don't know if you uh, thought about the relationship between Wikipedia and what you are doing. Uh, no, we didn't, but it's a very interesting approach uh, and very interesting qu question. And uh, no, no, we haven't uh, discussed it uh, in our materials, but we are some kind of using in some uh, some theoretical materials. We are, um, I know that we are uh, our, um, I don't remember the word, uh, uh, quotes. quotes, yeah. If, if we are uh, having some citate uh, źródła, <laughs> quotes and sources from yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah, quotes and sources from Wikipedia. So we are using uh, and we are um, linking to, to Wikipedia. Um, I guess our partner Demagog Association yeah. is working m more with Wikipedia uh, because, as Aneta said, we are more like in preventional state. We are not really in, into disinformation, but what happened before, so how we are exposed on uh, disinformation through our emotions. So this is the main topic of our program. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Uh, so we have here our email address. If you want to contact us, you can just uh, write uh, on that email address. Uh, and uh, if you want to see materials that we designed, they are unfortunately in Polish. In, in the paper we have only in Polish. But on the website, on the uh, on this link, you will find uh, all the versions. Uh, also, these international ones, uh, and and we have also some sweets for you. So please enjoy and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And we are here for a while around. So if you want, you can approach us, and we can also talk face to face about our projects. Thank you. <laughs>